I've set up to do the pasta course again today. We've got um, four Wednesdays teaching various methods of using pasta. Today we're using water in the pasta and doing a beat scene. And uh, last time we did snow. The students are doing very well. We started off with the three and we've built up to five today and hopefully more next week and so on in a new situation here teaching at Bridge. They don't know me yet, so it takes time to become established. And then after that, hopefully we're going to start running a, an acrylics course here as well in between my being here and in France. So anyway, we'll follow on today and I'll make a short film just to show you some examples of the work they've done and I'll try and photograph the stages as we go through so that uh, you can see how they develop and how they do with all of these methods. Today I've got the students the SAA set of pastels so they can, can try and compare those very reasonably priced pastels um, against or with the more expensive Eurism pastels. And these are really the only two that I actually use now. And I've got my own brand new set of unisons to use today. Yeah. Well, we're ready and set up for the students now. Okay, so I'm now discuss the papers with you, the materials, the pastels, we talked about the SAA pastels, what the value they are. 
the slightly heavier in fact and more to them in weight than the unisons, but the quality is a little bit harder, not quite to the high quality of the unisons, but then you get what you pay for, value for money there, excellent. So today you can use both the full set of the SAA pastels and the unisons. We're working on proper pastel paper today doing the block and blend method, and uh, I've discussed with all the surfaces of paper and the pieces to get you started, what we've done now is to divide up the paper into quarters and then an eight. And then you can draw lines over if you want, or you can just work straight from where things come parallel to those lines. Take a medium color uh, tone pastel, not a bright light one, or a, a white one, or a very dark one, just a medium tone. And I want you to work out these basic forms of the biggest shapes, so where these rocks come, just the angle of where that branch comes, where these grasses come. The largest, most obvious changes in color and tone because we're going to do those background colours first. We're going to work from our background towards our foreground, medium tones outwards to the lightest and darkest. And we're going to do this block and blend thing by blocking in the background colours and blending them and then working heavier colours over the top. So we're going to kill the colours at first and then bring them back again. Now, uh, one of the things with landscapes normally is in daylight, we discussed this the other week, where I talked about the atmosphere and the air, and how things in the distance usually go lighter and paler and bluer due to the atmosphere and water droplets in the air. The opposite being when you've got a sunset or sunrise when it can be warm in the background and cool in the foreground. Normally we have more detail in the foreground and it goes out of focus into the background, so we're warm in the foreground and cooler in the background. This photograph shows that fairly clearly because you can see the cooler, softer colours in the background and the warmer greens here. Very often the photographs flatten things out and the greens look the same in the foreground and the background, but you know that in your picture you've got to make things warmer. You've got to make those greens browner, redder in the foreground, bluer, cooler in the background. So what I want to do is start from this very background here, the very furthest back. And it's a very light to the pinks and blue greens. And we can do this mixing, mixing of colours. Now, the other week we talked about broken colour. There uh, is um, broken colour, which if Monet was painting, he would use red and yellow dots rather than mixing red and yellow to make a bright colour. We're going to be able to do this a little bit today. And we're going to start up here with the sky and then work our way down to that middle piece there. The sky, rather than just having one, I mean, you might see that as just white. We're going to put a couple of colours together to make that really vibrate to start with. My first coat I'm going to put in fairly a bit, a bit darker um, and just blend it in. And I'm going to start with, he says, looking for it, a very, very light blue if I've got it. And I've blended that in. Now, any other colours I put on here, I don't want to touch again. So that has been killed. If I do another piece of chalk over that, just look how fresh that is there compared to here. You can see it from there. So that's, that's the difference. We've killed it there and we're going to put succeeding colours on that we're not going to kill. So we're on to our next stage. I'm going to use a very light pink and we're going to do a slightly bit of broken colour now. Don't overdo this. Clean it just on the sponge there if you want to get it, make sure it's clean. Or on your sleeve in your case, whatever. <laughs> and fairly gently just drag it over the surface look to just get a layer. Just pushing it down gently, let the blue show through. Don't, don't destroy the whole thing. So we get that effect. So this effect is called scumbling, where we just drag a brush across the surface. In paint, it's usually a dry brush, and we just fairly dry brush, and we just work the, the, the pigment over the surface. Put the pink down. There's quite a light yellow. And again, just over the surface, we've got the pink. Just look how that shines. Now, we've got three colours, we've got two warms and a cool. And look at that lovely effect of luminosity we get with those three colours together. I'm going to go to a mid blue grey now. Can you show us on the opposite That bit there. That whole background bit there, yeah. The whole light colour in the background. Taking out a grey mode now. I'm going to start working in this purple haze into this. Just on the edges here, just make it a bit darker up there, just touching with the pastel. So we're, that's fresh pastel now, it's all nice and light and distant and fresh, okay? So that was the lure mid-grey. Let's come all the way down now. 
I'm it's doing a lot of my rubbing vertically, especially down the water here, because I want to get this effect of light in the water vertically. I'm going to go back to one of the earlier light pinks and just use that again, but this time nice and freshly, the little dots and dashes back here. We've done a background colour of the trees by using that green, blue, grey. Then we've worked up some pinks and some slightly deeper blue greys to make the branches and the shadows in the trees. We've brought that blue grey down with the pink through the water using vertical strokes all the way down here. Then I'm going back with a little of that light pink again to bring out, to bring out as I'm doing now, some of these rocks and pebbles. So we're going to touch with the cream now with the light branches, just the surface of the branches, not putting dots and dashes, we're just coating those light areas of sunlight as they come down through here. So I'm using a deeper green, but ever so lightly, just to find some of these ever so gently just tickling in these little bits of dark shadow in the background here going up the edge. Again. So we're now working down into this area, which isn't that far off that turning away. But again, we're looking at mixing colours. We're going to need to mix about three colours here. We're going to want a, 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 a grey, blue, purple um, colour there. So I'm going to start with quite a warm grey, that one. The purple grey again, quite a warm one. Just to give a very light undercoat there. Let me put it here. So we're seeing the colours through the surface colours. We're seeing these colours glowing through the underneath colours. So I've got my grey there, and I'm just going to start bringing in some of these cooler greens, this turquoise here, just gently over the top. Use the side of the pastel, don't use the tip of the pastel. Start to learn to see colours. So we're seeing the dark, the darker mid-tones coming through here. Um, blending we're going to do, the more colour we put on. So we've got those greys and the turquoises, which you can see going on here. But they're cool greens. That's a cool green, the turquoise. We're going to put warmer ones on soon. Okay, we're doing all right. That's okay. As I say, it's often easier for me to teach Okay, so we're taking a warmer green now, stronger green. And this is where, if you, I mean, I have the green paper. This isn't far off the colour of my paper, so if I wanted to use the paper, I could do it, but I don't, I want to get. And I'm going to start making marks, again, with the tip and end of the pastel. It's a crisscrossing because we've got, we've got to put lights over darks and darks over lights, so we're going to have to come back over some of our bits. And we get now the, we've got our mid-tones and we're now working down towards our deepest. That green's there if anybody needs it. Right, this blue now, is a mid-blue, it's not a very bright, strong blue, it's just a start to our blues. And we've got to cut that in around these stones here. The light shining through the peaks and the leaves there makes it quite blue just there. Quite important. There, here, look. Even into the grasses and the ferns down here. So we're getting that effect of light. So, lunch time again. I'm going to check a quick look at the pieces of rock. Well, they're all coming on beautifully, look. Some lovely effects of light. Everybody's getting it now. But it's all new things for them to do, so it's a lot to learn. And we get our hostess bringing in the lunches. Hi. This is Emma, who runs the horse and muzzle with the mother. Very... On we go, deep purple. Now we can start to find our branches and trees behind here. This isn't the really dark, this is the background darks. Reflections, don't be afraid to just drag down a bit of some of those reflections to get the, the feeling of verticals. Keep the verticals going in the water. Where these ferns are here, for instance, I can start to make little marks in between the fern branches that are about the ferns. In the grasses, I can start to go in with the little bits of purple here into the grasses to make the feeling of grasses. You see that bit there? So deepest blue now, before we go down to our blacks, 
and I'm going over some of these purples and look at the difference it makes. It now it makes that purple look really warm. Put the right marks in the right shapes in the right places relevant one to another and your objects will just appear. So make the marks about the things you're doing, put them in the right places in the right shapes and make sure that the colours are right one to another and your picture just appears. You don't have to worry whether it's a horse, whether it's a portrait. But you just put the right things in the right place. We're using a, a mid-green, a leaf green now to make the light shine in between the darks. Not going over the darks as much as going in between. And we can make grass marks at the tip of the pastel, the very corner of the pastel down here. To start to actually draw those grasses in down there. Flicks of your wrist. Oh, next one then, nice sunny green. We're going to an even brighter bit of sunlight. Again, we're still working in between. And suddenly the whole thing will start to come to life as we get sunshine coming through here. If you want to go back with the colours you've already used at any time, you can do. You can go back. I'm using a bit of this light grey green now to go back into these colours, darker colours. I need a bit more of this light green. Before I do any more leaves, I want to go back in and now do get the water going. I need to get the lights in the water in a moment. So I'm going to use a very light cream, light blues and... That bothers me. Okay, did you think? Very nice. The photograph at first, you're doing so well. I think that those are all white. But it's not all white doing that. We're going to be starting with our light colours, our very light blues and creams in here and we're going to finish with the highlights of white to get that sparkle. So even though it's very hard to see them, we're going to reflect that sky which is cream down. We're going to play the sky against the very light blue, the cream against the blue. And then I'm going to put an even warmer, beautiful blue in there. I've got this the right one, here we are. A little bit of cobalt blue which will make that blue seem even lighter. The ultramarine cobalt blue. And look at the strength of these colours. Again, I want a nice pure colour, so I'm going to look for where my little bits of cream are on here. It's quite warm just there on these bits of... It's a little lighter cream than that. And eventually, at the very end, I should pick up on my white. And at the very end of the painting, before I put the very darks in, over those creams and light blues and pinks and so on, a bit more light blue in there. There's, there's all sorts of little bits of colour going on. And these, when I've got that cream in my hand, if there are little bits of cream up in the leaves up here, because we're putting now our lightest colours on, we've been through our mid tones, we've worked through to our very lightest, and now we are finally on, putting in highlights everywhere. And it might be that many of you. And I'm a detector, I can just stand back and look at this. But you might have to, at this last stage, take your pictures and put them against the wall and have a look from a distance. Because we're doing impressionist pieces, you can't always see so close up. So when you come to the last stage of this, you need to get back and look at it and then go back again and do some work on it. It becomes a bit like a fencing match. We come backwards and forwards into it. Finally, I can, uh, before I do my very dark, so I can start looking at the leaves now that are more separate. Now I've got the background colours in, I can actually come much more into this and start to look at these very strong bits of turquoise leaf and deeper green leaves that are happening here. It's just to see if you're all the way up to it. It's a quiet behind me, I thought it would just find out it's too late. I thought it would all gone. Crept out quite a bit. Just left you to it. I'm going while it's not looking. <laughs> they really find the darks against the lights, so I'm trying to do it more, but they really try to bring out these darks. Right, what I want to do now, and I'm going to go on and do smaller and smaller bits, and I just want to show you what happens when I put some black in. Are you ready girls? <gasps> so I've done my lights, I've got all my mid-tones, all I need now is a few darks. 
Now, black is going to make things very sooty. It's a very dark, warm colour. I don't want to use black in the background, but I can bring out some things to make them really stand out. So if I use a little bit of black here, look. Look how it really stands out, almost too much. So I want that branch here in the foreground. I'm going to use that black carefully there, swirling, twisting to just bring out those. Down here I want a bit more of the darks into these rocks. Look how that black brings that forward and that now goes to the back. At the very end, so our whites and our blacks, our darks at the very end, just to bring out a few things here and there. And it just gives you that three dimensional effect. So we work from our, our mid-tones, our light mid-tones, right the way through now into our darks and then through to our lights at the very darkest. I'm just putting it at the very, very end. I'm putting some very, very light turquoises in now to find my differences in warm colours. But for me, I need stronger greens here. So keep looking for colour. I'm using this very bright, sort of warm pink at the minute. So I suddenly realise that I want my rocks a bit warmer up here and through here. So that's something I remember from the past. But I'm using the yellow ochre now and almost an orange look. On these rocks in the foreground, on the moss, let's just have a quick look. You'll be lost otherwise. On the moss here, it's not just the green, it's quite warm. But if I take some of this yellow ochre and just put it amongst the green, we get that closer, it brings it a lot closer to us. Yeah? It suddenly brings the whole thing forward. So really look for that, that challenge of warm and cool colours as well as are going on here. You're so involved in what you're doing now, you don't even want to look up. You're well away. And that's the thing, it's fun, it's pleasure, you're getting into it. You're playing with light, you're playing with colour as Monet's impressionist did now. We're really enjoying it. I'm using some bright pink here in the foreground on these stones now as well to bring those forward. But how I played again with the light blues and things here to push against one colour, against another, against another. So I'll come around and just make sure you're all okay from now on. That gives you something to work from. Okay, so we're going to finish off this lesson with the other ones are all absolutely knackered and gone home. Finished with lovely paintings. These three um, stalwart characters here are going to carry on doing some water and uh, pastel on this lovely misty scene on the river lot. No way wrong. That's the way. So that's our base colours. I want to use the water. Sometimes it's easy for me to teach beginners because they have no bad habits. What we're doing now is we're using the pastel with water and a fine brush to pick up some of the dark pastel and make our finer drawing of trees and branches with the pastel, not paint, which we would have very great difficulty with a heavier pastel to do.
Well, today we're going to be trying some of these pan pastels are very kindly donated to me to try out. I had asked if we could have a few more colours um, because obviously to do a proper demonstration on full landscape it would be a lot easier to have some more darks as well. Um, but I've, re I've written twice and had no reply so uh, all I can do is work with these which is nice to have anyway just to see what they will do. And I'll explain my thoughts on those as we go along. And I've got those to use with the Unison so fortunately I've got my other darks as well. You notice that they come with these special little tools for applying and blending as well. So I think it may be very useful for clients and students of mine that hate feeling pastel, that don't like pastel on their fingers because they can use the tools totally and never actually get to grips physically with the pastels. So we're going to use some black Indian ink and I've got that in bottles for the students here so you guys will want a little pot to put a bit of black ink in okay right. and water jar. Do I need that if I'm doing it on this? So I yes, work yes, you know, it still works yeah. and you'll want a water pot as well and something just to, to mix in. And um, then I've got uh, two brushes and each of them's going to be given a piece of stick. There we are, that I've sharpened at the ends because a stick can draw with ink as nicely as a brush can. We're going to see that today as well. Right, I'm going to do a more in-depth discussion in a moment. But what I'd just like you to do is, if you just leave what you're doing for a moment and just come round me here, I just want to show you the tools we're using. Um, I've already shown you um, that one over there, which is the example of how we can use stick and ink and brush and ink with water because um, it does thin down, just mix with water until it's dry. So we can use that with watercolour as well because you can watercolour over the top of it, of course, because mm -hmm. it's dry, it won't, it won't mix. So rather than use profi pens or fine line pens, you've got much more versatility with a brush and with a stick. And it's surprising, I've got a Ponzi stick, you haven't. <laughs> I've shaped mine up. Um, but you can have a, a, a blunt end and a sharper end. And it's surprising the length of a line that we can actually do with just a piece of stick. You know, Look at that. On and on and on. It's like a pen, isn't it? Yeah. And you just wouldn't believe that. So any stick that hasn't got a pith in it, otherwise we're taking a pith. <laughs> oh, oh, God. Um, dearie me, it's bad this morning. Uh, because obviously a pith is a hole in the middle. Um, so the blunt end, I don't want to use that in a minute because I'm going to cover my hands. But I'll be using the brushes mainly because I prefer brushes, but for fine work and for loose work, and obviously you can, you can dot and dash with that, you can do the textures with it, you can roll it, you can smudge with it. When I tend to use my finger even with ink and then to wash it off afterwards. So I've done some lovely moving, for instance, if I had a model here for you, and we had a model moving constantly, so 10 minute poses. This is a great way to do that because you can shadow in with this, you can use a little bit of water even, and you, know, you can blend with your finger. You can use the brushes, you can use the stick. Very versatile, lovely for landscapes. If you can get hold of some old newsprint, you know what newspaper's printed oh, okay. on. It goes a yellowy colour, it fades over the years, and it looks lovely with stick and ink, or, or pen and ink, um, because it goes into the little parchment type colour. It takes the ink very well as well, and of course it's nice and cheap too. So, you know, not watercolour paper normally, I've just used that today to show you. Um, now, of course, once you've got those darks on there, nothing to stop us from coming back in with, with colours. And let's just see how that works. So a little bit of colour here. Um, use one of my brushes. And look, you can use it like watercolours before, or we can go in more heavily. And we can use our fingers. And you can just see the black showing through, or we can work around the black. And we will be able, of course, as well, to work over the pastel too, or even in wet into wet, as you can see there. So we've got this today's fun day. And I'm going to also use the pan pastels today. That's these over here. I've been set, uh, sent a set of pan pastels um, to experiment, to explore with as landscape. Right, so I'm going to start on this green paper with the pan pastels and let the green show through a bit using Indian ink first of all um, to make the darks and then work the, the lighter colours around it. Starting with the, the black Indian ink, I'm not going to bother drawing it out at all. I hope we're not going to get it over this lovely white chair. Um, let's see, approximately there's a tree here. Quite some ink in my brush. Just mark it where some of the things are. Now, I, I, noticed, I remember one artist who came to do some demonstrations for the Arts and Art Gallery once, and um, he was using a cottonwood earbud, earbuds, you know, little earbuds on sticks. He does his pastels on coloured paper like this, and he starts with the Indian ink, um, and does, uses the earbud to do all the drawing, first of all, in the darks, and then works his pastels, and it's very effective indeed. So that's another little tool you might think of using. You can use an earbud for blending pastel as well, for doing finer work, for blending edges, but it's also great for actually drawing with the Indian ink. So let's just um, get in these nice strong... You won't need an awful lot of ink, it's very strong. Um, hopefully we can pour it back into the bottle later if we, if we don't need it. And as the brush goes drier, I can make marks that are about these leaves. 
So I can make little leafy type dark marks there. I've already got a nice little picture already. It's, it's a lovely thing to work with. I'm not going to put too many um, details in it this stage, you know. Now let's have a go with these hand plastics. For using Indian ink, make sure you wash your brush well at the end, otherwise you're going to end up with a... Because there's a varnish in this Indian ink, an actual water-based varnish that will dry like a shellac. And it will solidify your brush up. Right, the little tools that we've got for putting this on with. We've got, we've got this little trowel-like object which we put a, a, a toe onto of, of the sponge. Then we've got the larger bits of sponge as well. I'm going to start with... Um, I've got to mix these colours so it's not going to be that easy. Uh, I'm going to start with blue and brown to make myself some grey. So did you use the stick there or the brush? I use the brush, but you can use whatever you want. Yeah, I mean, for the, for the larger areas, use the brushes. Yeah. For the finer areas, use the stick. You might want to use a stick more towards the end, but we'll see how it goes. But you see, yeah. the, the, the pastel does let the fine work show through. Yeah, so okay? Yeah. Right, so I've got to mix my grey. I haven't got greys here. So to make this, this, um, this colour, I'm going to start with a little bit of white. You see how it goes on. Now that's interesting. So this is with the sponge applicator. These are the hand pastels. And I'm going to start with some lighter colours, just blending them on. Actually, they're coming on more, more freshly than I expected, so I'm quite pleased in a way. And I've got to make quite a textural sky to begin with. You're going to go a long way, these pastels, I can see that. But, um, whether I can get them heavy enough for the impasto work I want, I don't know. This is the first time I've ever used these pan pastels. To give a, a base to my greys, first of all. Now I've got to come in with those blues. And gradually work over. So I'm letting the paper, in this case, glow through. Starting with my lightest colours and then working up the blue into it. Now, of course, you could do this with even the unisons by using them very, very lightly. But it's quite a fun method. And as I say, it, it means that those of you who are, have allergies to pastels or things like this or just don't like the feel of the pastel, and I've had that with some people, it does mean that you can um, work with pastel and it won't be on your hands. So I'm using the pastel a little bit more heavily now, rubbing it into the paper there because I want a stronger blue just there. And I'm using it much more lightly just across the surface here, just to get my mixture of greys. You can see now the paper's starting to disappear. I'm going to take a little bit of, of yellow now. I haven't cleaned the sponge at all. I've got to bring some yellow into the sky. Right, I've used quite a large um, sponge there, applicator there. Let's take a, a slightly smaller one now, round shape. And I'm going to come back in with those whites and start to build up these lighter areas of clouds. I could have carried on with the big one, but not to worry. And I can start to work my lights up into the trees around here. It's stronger just there. Let's see if we can get a slightly stronger mix of the, of the light now here. Right, let's try this small applicator in a moment then. And let's see what we can get in the way of details amongst the trees. It's a bit lighter around the trees. So we can build this up. I'm, I'm impressed as to how much we can put layers on if we're delicate with it. So you can press harder to get a stronger colour like that, or you can go delicate colours to blend. Now let's try this little um, applicator tool, this one. Um, a little shoe on it, and we'll start to work some of these lights into the trees. Little dots and dashes here. You'd be quite surprised what you can do with a, with a limited palette. So, for a beginner's set, this is the landscape set that they sent me. You can see that it is possible. Not the yellow, I don't need the yellow yet. I'll use the yellow on the, on the fields in a moment more. And just Go back in with some of this Indian ink. Let's see if it goes with the pastel. Yes, it will do. Look, we can put it back in again. Don't be afraid to play with mixed media. Don't be afraid to experiment. You're not going to have adventures in art without taking risks. We have to take risks. Remember our aerial perspective. Linear perspective is where we have things going smaller away from us and vanishing points. But aerial perspective is where it goes warm, cooler, cooler, cooler. 
a lot of blues and greens, so you can see my dark left behind there now. Orange here, but let's see what we can do with this colour by using yellow with it. A mixture here, there's a lovely warm field mixture here. You can use it to give effects of the grasses look. Dabbing it on. I dab this like this, I can get the effects of these grasses here. If you want, I'll give you these bits of stick today if you want to keep them as presents. So you've got your own little bits of stick. And you can say, Pete gave us a bit of stick today. Concentrate, so I've got jokes as well. Come on. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be in concentration, you know. Classes, the private ones I run, people do their own things. We don't follow a, a course or a class. Everybody's at their own level doing their own things. So there's no reason why you have to follow exactly what we do here. You can branch off into your own work and not on any course with me. And mix them even in the palette. So I'm going to take a little bit of that brown and put it with a bit of white and just see if we can get brown to mix with the white, a little bit of this very light colour in the background. It's almost getting too much pastel on. And I'm always done with this little demo, I think. It's just to show you what could be done with these. I could go back in the darks if I wanted, but I probably just about succeeded in showing you what you needed to see how these can be used. Right, I'm going to go on now down to the woodland one. Now, just to finish off on this one, uh, because it's so dull, I just want to have a bit of fun in the foreground and add a few little copies and things here. I think I'll have a bit of fun. And just put some little colours against the... Yeah. And a few little yellow flowers in there as well, just to brighten up the foreground a little bit of an effect. Yeah. Sunshine in there. All it needs, a few dots extra, and there we are. Exploding upwards. I consider trees are like atomic explosions. The acorn comes down off the tree, hits the ground, explodes upwards, and starts to branch out like an umbrella, like mushrooms. And then it comes down and round like the leaves of autumn trees, dropping down onto the uh, soil again to regenerate, so, it's a much smaller brush now, I have to start painting these very fine lines. So, mixed mediums and different ways we can use them. And that grey is coming quite a lot in here actually, it comes up behind. So, I'm going to work around my trees a bit here, and that green just here. And I shall block and blend on this, I'm going to block and blend this bit in. So, I'm working up from my darks to my midtones, and now putting on some yellow ochre. And the little bits of texture in two of the leaves come down, you can dot and dash so that I get the cool shadows of my greens. It's not just warm greens. And I'm going to place some cools with these warm lights in just a moment. And then now the cool, this is a very, very light blue that I'm going to start putting in with this cream. So if you lot are finding trouble finding your colours, have a look at mine again, and you can see all these weird colours going on. You think, how do you find those? Now I want to go to my really strong yellow, which I haven't used yet. A bit more of the purples now. So I'll just say I can come back into that with um, Indian ink if I want to, or I can just finish off with my own darks. And I'm going to finish that one at that, um, just to sort of demonstrate to you those different ways of working. So using a rake brush on the pastel with water to start to effect on the grass. You've got some lovely strong colours here. Absolutely lovely work. Oh, yeah. oh, very pleased with that. It just certainly makes a difference. And that's coming on well now, that's it. Just go across the... Oh, there are certain things that won't work, but there are so many things that will. I play around with them to get the effect. That's beautiful. Looks good on camera, look. 
Mm. We look better on camera. <laughs> <laughs> I do. You're trigged out to do this now. You're branching out into a whole new medium. <laughs> Rooting right into it. Good. Well, that looks gorgeous on here, yes. And round to this one with the lovely fluffy clouds. Yep. Gotcha. Looks good for me anyway. Yeah, it's kind of Yeah. Yeah.